Yeah. Right. Um, tonight, guys, I'm going to show you how to make a two-hook loop rig, also known as the Portsmouth rig. Um, but yeah, I call it the two-hook loop rig. Um, I'm going to show you the way I'll do it. There are, I can't suppose, to be honest, the rig is exactly the same. I mean, there are different things you can change, like the thickness of your hooks and hoods, size of your hooks, whether you put bling on it or not. Um, but yeah, this is this is how most people do it. So what you will need for this is, if you come over here, mate, shock leader, obviously for the main rig body, hooks and I like to use um, Amnesia for all my snoods. Um, and this is 20 pound in red because I like red for, for flatfish and I might normally use these for place fishing. Um, a lead, you don't need a lead, but I, I use that for pulling the knots nice and tight. Some crimps, again, you don't have to use crimps. You can use um, 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 like power gum and uh, tie line knots on to, to hold it so you can still slide it up and down. You will want your hooks, which I'm using these size three saltwater champions from Vivas. I love these hooks. Uh, I've only just started using them, but already I love them. Um, small size swivels and a larger size swivels. Also, you're going to want a Gemini SRT spring, a Cascade swivel, that's a Sakuma one, I think, an imp or some sort of bait, uh, bait clip for the bottom. Um, these are optional, rig tubing, which I'll show you what that's for in a minute. You're gonna need a few few beads, um, and they're, uh, they're, they're silicon beads from um, 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 Sea Glow, and there's a couple of sequins just for you, but I'll show you them when we get to them. So, that's what you need. And uh, here I'm gonna start off with, with how I start off with. All of my rigs, it doesn't matter what rig I'm, what rig I'm making, I always, always start at the bottom. So, I am gonna do this as quick as I can, because she's gonna get bored. So, um, Tie on the bottom, always start at the bottom. Oh yeah, if anyone watched the last week video, I've got a lot of comments for biting the tag ends off. Um, and everyone whinging. So on today's video, I thought I'd add in a pair of scissors. Um, so obviously take the tag end off. Right, now, for a two loop rig. Now a lot of people would start by putting a crimp, then a bead, then a swivel, then a bead, then a crimp. But there's no need in putting to put a crimp on that, in my opinion. So I'll start with yes. just a bead. It's just that, I'm busy, mate. I'll start with just a bead. That's gonna go down. Now, I'm gonna leave that tight to the bottom on that knot. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it tight on the bottom. Um, the smaller swivels are for your snoods. I like to use smaller swivels. I use smaller than that as well sometimes, but this is just what I've grabbed. So that will then slide down, obviously, and sit on top of the bead. Now the bead is there to protect the knot. And then another bead, and then a crimp. Let me just get one of them out. This bag's in better days. And then a crimp. Now I haven't got a crimping tool <laughs> um, because I don't. I don't. I think they probably crimp the crimp down a bit too tight, and I don't want to damage my line. Um, obviously with the cast and things like that. So I've I got to admit, I just use my teeth then I just I just sort of just bite them down just gently. And if you get it right, if you bite them down at the perfect amount, they will still slide as well with a bit of force. So that crimp comes down onto the top of that bead. Now I'll never, I'll never close them up real solid tight because then the swivel won't spin as well. So I always give it just a couple of mil and that that's now got a bit of movement. So I'll just... A little bite at the top, I don't know if you can see that taking out. A little bite at the top and a little bite at the bottom. Now whether that will still slide I don't know but I'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, pause that a minute mate, I'll back in a sec. Yeah. Right. Sorry about that. Kids coming down, disturbing. So there's there's the bottom. You can use whatever colour beads you want. Um, it, that really doesn't matter. So that is the bottom with a with a crimp down. Um, and then again, next one you want to slide on another crimp. Now you can make these as long as you want or as short as you want. Um, I'm gonna do mine. So it's 
about that long because that's just what I always do. Um, and then, all right, there's quite a lot of line left at the top of the rig, but you can always trim that down or, or whatever you want. So that's that. So the crimp. Now, I won't clamp that down yet. From the crimp, I can get hold of it, your SRT spring. Um, for, for those of you that have never used these, um, and think, oh, I know, I could use a spring out of a pen. Doesn't work. I tried it when these springs first ever come out, and I didn't have none. Um, I thought, ah, oh, nick, nick the spring out of a pen, but no, it doesn't work. Um, so yeah, crimp, then your SRT spring, which slides, and you want a bead, like that. So that bead is now gonna come down and it will compress your SRT spring. Now, you can buy, from German Eye, the packets of springs that come with their own beads and their own crimps, or you can just buy packs on their own. I don't bother with, the, with their own beads and their own crimps, I just, Use ones I've got. I don't think they're much price difference, if any, um, but I just, yeah, I don't bother with them. Yeah, so bead, then you swivel, and that sits on top of your bead and your spring like that. Lovely. And then, um, and then another bead. And again, I don't bother putting a crimp on the top of that because. If that wants to slide up and down, not not so much the, the spring, I don't suppose the spring will slide up and down, but if the, if the bead and the swivel slide up and down while they're fishing, it does, it doesn't. That doesn't matter, it's not gonna get in the way of anything. Just the way I'll do it. Some people like to make them thingy, some, some don't, so I, I don't. So don't bother me, but I'm gonna bring that down ever so slightly. So that is basically the setup of the rig. Let me just have a little munch on this. Nice little thingy. And then I will probably take some of that off because it's probably a bit long. Um, take that off. And then bigger swivel. This bag of crap. Bigger swivel ties to the top so then that can connect to the clip on your main line or you can tie it direct to your, to your shot leader on your reel, on your main line, whatever. Um, and that is the body of the rig done. Now, to be honest, that's the simple part with a loop rig, because the point of it being a loop rig is that it all clicks down um, for casting. Um, so this is what I use this for. Breakaway lid, put the bait clip on there. You can really give it a good pull down. There are not pullers, you can buy specific tools for that, but I, just, I haven't got one, because I'll use a lid. Um, yeah, so doing the, doing the rig body for a loop, for a loop rig, or any clip down rig for that matter, is normally the easy bit. It's it's getting the snoods right, because they've got to be, they've got to be right. Um, and I will show you now. So first of all, for this loop rig, I'm gonna make the bottom part of my snood for the bottom hook. So there it is there, very small. That's probably 100 mil long, and I'll show you the reason why. Um, just trying to think now, what do I need to do here? I've forgotten myself. Tie that onto the pop to the bottom of that, sorry. I've just my head went blank for a second there. So this is the bottom part of the loop rig, the bit that clips. Because the bottom uh the bottom snood is in two parts basically. And the reason being is because you need to get the cascade swivel in there to make to be able to make the loop on the bottom hook, which is why it's called the loop rig. So that's that. See that? My dirty hands. So that is that. And then your hook will go onto there. So let's do that now. say you can put on here what you want you can put your bit of bling on here not that you're going to get much on this bottom up reason being i'll show you the reason for this bottom up in a minute uh, let me just trim this because it's a junk end so i'll just stick a sequin on there just as an added bit 
and then you rock. Now, generally, with two, if you're using a two-up loop rig, you are scratching. Fishing for smaller species fish. I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you, I'm not saying you can't catch a big fish on a loop rig because you, obviously you can. But this is would be regarded. You you want to try and get a couple couple of fish at a time, maybe. Um, whatever. So you wouldn't have a massive great big bait going on. I oh, just screwed that up. Look. You wouldn't have a massive great big bait going on there anyway. But that's basically going to sit like that. And then obviously, if you want to add um, the sea guy beads then that just goes on it like that. Slides up and over as if it was a worm, straight up and over the knot. And it acts as, as a bit of a bait stop if you're only using very small weights. Um, anyway, that's that. Now, this is the bottom hook. So that tiny little snood. That's gonna sit on your imp or on your impact lead, whatever you use. And then your other bait from the top hook is going to sit on that little hook of the cascade swivel. So that means you've got a bait there and then another bait. The baits, I like to keep these, these bits of line as short as I can so that the baits sit together and they both sit right behind the lead. Um, so you haven't got a bait down here and then a bait up here. And then as they go out, they're wobbling because there's weight in the middle of the rig, if that makes sense. I like them both together so the weight, the lead, the weight of both baits are sitting right up tight, right up close. Um, it just gives better presentation really, it's probably me being a bit anal but it's um, it's just how I, how I like to do it, how I've always done it. Then this part of the line from, this is the second part of the uh, of the bottom snood, it can be as long as you like, you can have it that long, you can even have it that long because it's going to be a loop and it doesn't matter, you can make that as long as you like. Um, let's not be silly about it, I like them quite long though. Um, so that long for about 300 mil. No, it's a bit more than that. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a lot more than 300 mil. 18 inches. We go with 18 inches. Um, again, you can so you can have it as long as you like. Now that bit, that bit of line ties to the top of the cascade wheel. The line. Oh, scissors, not bad. With, with scissors, not, not your gathers. Um, let's, let's have it. And then that will tie to the bottom, that to that bottom swivel. Just like that. Scissors again, scissors. <laughs> Can't help myself. Um, so then when your lead's on, Forget about the top hook for a sec. This one's this one's got a nice bit of distance from the lead fishing fishing on the, on the seabed. Um, when I say with a bit of bling on it or whatever. So that's that. Now what's going to happen is when you clip this rig up, you put your bait on and you clip it up. You've got your lead. That's the bottom hook that's going to go on that. And then your next hook is going to clip onto that onto that cascade swivel. And let me, I'll get that done now. Now before you cut this, because you don't know exactly how long it's got to be, it's got to go from that from that spring down to that other clip, down to that cascade tool. So for me, the way I'll do it, tie your hook on. I forgot to put bling on it and all, but it is what it is. Use a scissor handle as a knot puller this time on the hooks because it's small hooks and I can't get my sausage fingers in there. Pull that nice and tight. Use the scissors to trim the knot like that. Now if you clip it up, there is another way of doing it and I should have done it to be fair, but I didn't. But if you clip it up, I'll show you that in a sec. Put your hook Top the, on top of your cascade to where it's meant to sit. Forget about the loop. And then you can pull that up. Pull that line up to roughly 
where you want it, which has got to be about there. And then cut it. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. That, obviously now that end is going to tie to your top swivel on the top of the uh, top of the spring. Just like that. I hate making rigs, especially these ones, because they're just long. So that will tie to that. And then what you want to hope is now, it's all going to clip up together nicely. Fingers crossed. So that clips to there. That clips to there. And when you pull the whole rig tight, like that, see the loop? That's why it's called the loop rig, because you've got that nice little loop there. And then when it's pulled tight, you've got stretching the line, which is compressing the string, uh, the spring, sorry. And it all sits nice and tight. Now what you don't want is this to be too short, because then it'll be, um, yes, if this is too short, then the tension will be on the hook lengths and not on the 70 pound line. So basically then you'll be casting 20 pound line and it is dangerous. It'll end up snapping and stretching everything else. So let's clip that up again quickly and I will show you what happens when it hits the C. I'm, I'm making it look so fiddly, but I'm not used to doing these with videos. Um, so that goes like that. There's your loop. Let's pull it out from it. Pull that out from in there. So that's it's like that. That's obviously tied to your, to your main line. And then when it hits the C, the imp comes off. You've got that one up there. It's not long enough to get tangled all around the lead. And then this one is fishing nicely on the bottom. Um, and obviously, it all... Um, it's all quite a nice compact rig. Now, what I should have done is I shouldn't have cramped that up. Do the bottom hook as I did. Make this as long or short as you want. Tie it up, clip it up, then slide that up, and then then crimp it down when it's at the right tension. I've just got lucky there with the, with the length of the line. So yeah, that is the uh, that is the turret loop rig. If you need to see any more, these are, I've done this one now, and I done last week. Or the week before, I've done the pulley rig and the pulley dropper rig. They're the three rigs I use. Other than that, I've just used the flowing trace, um, which I think most of us know how to do that. Um, I don't. To, to me, I I don't see that there's any other rigs that can help me out. A lot of people like the up and over rig, but a pulley dropper to me is just the same. I can just make it longer, make the make the rig longer, um, and it fishes on the bottom exactly the same. So, yeah, I used a pulley panel, pulley dropper with a panel, um, or single hooks, and two hook loop rig. I don't, I've, I've never used fruit, fruit rigs really, um, unless they're shop bought ones or, or I get them made for me by um, Mike West because he makes brilliant rigs. Um, other than that, that's it. But if there are any rigs anyone wants to see being made, um, then I can do most of them. I just don't need to. So, yeah, we're. Um, me and T are fishing tomorrow. We're not sure where yet. We're not sure what for. To be honest, it's probably just going to be like a little scratching trip because we're going pumping in the morning and then pumping in the evening. So we need to do something in between. Um, so yeah, we're probably going to fish somewhere around the Dungeness. Um, so look out for that video and we'll see you then. Cheers, guys.